David starts uh, with the you know first two verses. Hear my cry, O God. Attend my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So, you know, just kind of reading those two verses, the first two verses, and, um, you know, meditating and kind of getting some thoughts. My, my first, you know, my first thought on this, it's, it's you know, David, you know, did a wise praying, right? Uh, because in, in one sense, you know, he understand, you know, he understood that God hears all the prayers, right? But in the other sense, in the sense of answering and, respo- and responding favorably, God, God knows, you know, does not hear or attend to all prayers. So that's, that's, that's kind of, you know, understanding that I, I get from here that David says, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, I, I would like to read a phrase from Spurgeon and it says the, um, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's about the prayer. So it says the, uh, the Spurgeon says, Pharisees might rest in the prayer in their prayers. True believers are eager for an answer to them. Uh, ritualists might be satisfied when they have said or sung, and uh, and the collect uh, and their lit- litians and collects. But living uh, living children of God will never rest till their supplications have entered the ears of the Lord. God of Saba. So this is, uh, you know, this tells that we sh- we should pray without, you know, without ceasing. We should pray and and cry to God. It's not like just, you know, we say we say a prayer before, you know, we go to bed. But you know, we are always there, you know, under under our knees, praying to God, crying to God. And when you think, you know, King David. You know, was by you know by the word king. You know, he was the king, and that time you know was praying without ceasing. You know, praying to God. You know, cr- crying and praying to God. So that means a lot. You know, nowadays for us. So uh, when it's uh, so the, the as we move along, so when it says from the end. You know, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Uh, just some, you know, commentaries uh, for this. So uh, we know that you know David did not travel far outside the the promised land, right? But yet, you know, figuratively, uh, he was at the end of the human understanding and strength, you know, and strength and resources. There was a real and powerful sense in which you know this prayer was offered from the end um, you know from the end of the the earth so uh, that you know it, david is trying to express you know is trying to express that this prayer you know it's it's going you know far it's going you know kind of above and beyond that that we you know it's not just a simple prayer Right. So, uh, and the other, you know, one other thought could be that, you know, David did not say that from the end of the the earth, I'll give, you know, I'll give give up hope. And from the end of the earth, I'll deny, you know, that your love, but that at the limit of his wisdom, endurance and ability, David said, I'll cry to you. So, you know, was it's very, you know, fascinating that the the poetic, you know, words that David is trying to, you know, you know, write down here. It's you know, it's amazing. Uh, to the to the you know verse two when it says, "When my heart is overwhelmed, uh, lead me to the rock that you know is higher than I." So. 
you know, like I like I mentioned at the at the very beginning, you know, uh, David was, you know, he was going through something, right? As the Bible says, you know, his his heart, you know, his heart was was warm, overwhelmed. Uh, we don't know that, right? We don't know what what David was going was going through. We we can assume, right? We can assume. Probably some people can say because you know he was uh, um, he was right after the Absalom uh, revelation or uh, uh, or you know many things, too many things that you know were going through his life. But one thing that um, um, you know it's kind of to emphasize it's 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 good to kind of uh for my opinion it's good that we don't know that what kind of circumstances you know king david was going through because sometimes we are tend to you know to to limit god and saying that only only for those you know circumstances or those kind of you know scenarios god can, is going to help us but god it's 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 always there so god is it's powerful he can help us you know in every kind of you know um uh, circumstances right so you know we are not tempted to limit god's you know god's rescue anytime uh on that portion when it said you know the uh, when it you know verse mentioned to the rock um we see we see that you know desperate need from king, king david to you know to go to to the rock you know to go to a place to a safe, safe place uh, a place that it's above himself right a place that it's it's you know his wisdom uh, above his abilities uh, he was looking for you know, something that it's a play, you know, a place that it's stability and security, uh, something strong enough to stand again, you know, against crashing waves or uh, quaking earth. So, uh, just kind of you know breaking down and and uh, understanding uh, and diving in. So we we you know we see that. Uh, King David, you know, I when it says you know the rock that's uh, that is higher than I, I'm not. Uh, I don't. I don't think that David was you know uh, speaking for himself. You know, like you know proudly and stuff like that. But he was he was really looking for something you know that he needs. You know, something that he didn't find to, to you know to himself. Maybe he didn't find to his kingdom or to you know to his servants, and that you know he was looking this you know this comfort this uh shelter to you know god himself to god you know uh, almighty god so as uh i'll 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 read the um the verses three and four um for sure i i'm not gonna i'll not try to be late uh, but uh, just i'll go quickly um the verses three and four it says for you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower for the enemy i will abide in your tabernacle forever so as you know i'd like to kind of um you know, give some thoughts for, you know, both two verses, three and four. So it starts, you know, for you have been a shelter for me and a, and a strong tower for, you know, from, from the enemy. So it, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's easy to understand that, God, you know, David is remembering uh, uh, what God, you know, had answered such a prayer in a, in a past right the the past the you know, god himself you know had been a shell a shelter and strong tower to david and uh when it says i will i will abide in your tabernacle forever so i was looking around kind of to, to, to get some other you know meanings about tabernacle you know because when we think for about tabernacle we think that you know beautiful b building you know ornaments and stuff like that but so the word uh, you know tabernacle was uh, it's a symbol you know symbol the word for tent right simple tent uh, 
So, you know, in, in, a, in a David's idea or in a David's mind, so the tent of God as a, as a refuge, so one was the, the tent of God as a refuge for, you know, for a, 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 we, a weary, weary travel, you know, the, the place, you know, the place where protection and hospi hospitality um, are given uh, to the honor of the guest, right? And the tent, you know, the tent of God, uh, the second one is the tent of God as the tabernacle of meeting, the center, you know, like, like I said, the, that, you know, the building that the people went to, you know, to bring the sacrifices and stuff like that. So the center of Israel sacrifices and, and worship. So imaginary, you know, of dwelling those, you know, goes back to the, to the desert. You know, we know the Exodus speaks, you know, Exodus and, and Numbers, Exodus and Numbers, you know, they, they speak a lot about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Lord tent. So, and uh, on that, on that, you know, on this page, we understand like you kind of we have a uh, a good idea. Maybe you know the the tabernacle that David was was speaking of. You know, we we see that one was the the tabernacle of um, you know refuge and place of protection, and the other one was the the place of of sacrifices and and stuff. So, but uh, and then when it says, "I will trust in in the shelter of your wings," so kind of uh, uh, I'll like to elaborate that a uh, uh, little bit further more. So uh, there are two, you know, two ideas that, you know, I, I was meditating and kind of, you know, sitting and, and thinking about this, you know, this verse here. So one, one is the, 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 the first one that's we, we understand the, sh the shelter of, of your wings, the maybe could be the first meaning, you know, as, as we know that, you know, the wings of, of a, of a mother, you know, mother birds. So the mother birds, you know, gives those uh, protection for her, you know, off for her offsprings, you know, of, you know, for her chicks under the shelter of, of her wings, you know, her wings. So those, you know, which means, you know, the wings are, are the, for the protection and, and, and taking care of, of you. And the other, the other meaning could be that, um, you know, those wings, uh, as we know that, uh, uh, you know, when we think about the God's, uh, God's uh, tabernacle, you know, the, uh, the interior that was, you know, was done that time. So we see those cherubim's wings, you know, uh, at the covenant, at the Ark of Covenant. So um, a shelter, a strong tower, your, you know, your tabernacle and your wings, you know, having those words in the, uh, in our minds. So we see that, you know, you know, wonderful God uh, is and what wonderful God we have. Uh, maybe this, you know, this is it's gonna emphasize, you know, more our, you know, our thoughts about God. But as as a king, you know, David, you know, wrote those verses. So we go, you know, we go through and 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 our heart, you know, it's 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 fully, you know, it's full with God. So and uh, just. Uh, Verses five, uh, five, six, seven. Uh, reading the, you know, those verses quickly. Um, For you, O God, have heard my my voice. You have you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So, uh, I would like to split those, you know, the three verses because uh, the reason is I I found that you know 
King David speaks for him, you know himself, and then it's you know from the from from the help of those you know maybe verse six and seven, it speaks for somebody else. So uh, somebody else, you know, it's, I'm gonna you know reveal that soon. But uh, verse six, uh, verse five, when it says. <clears throat> Uh, for you, O God, you know, have heard my voice. Uh, David probably um, referred to the past, you know, to the uh, voice in the past, right? And I, I don't think that something happened right away. Could you know, even though you know could happen, but I don't think you know during those when David was you know writing this this psalm you know something happened with you know between his you know voice and god but i think it's you know he's ref referring you know the, the voice in the past and how you know the loyal loyalty to god so uh you know which he continued you know honor him so god heard you know the these vows and and responded to them and uh when i you know when it says that uh you you prolong the king's life i you know for my understanding uh, the king david confidentially expected you know the the god's blessing i don't see any Conf, you know, confidence in him, but I, you know, I don't see any proud in him. I don't know. I, I, I and also either, you know, I don't see any, you know, thought that he's, you know, thinking for himself, himself highly, but it's only the confidence in the, you know, in, the, in God that he, he thought that, yes, God will prolong the king's life. So this is the assurance, you know, sometimes we, we might, we might feel small, you know, sometimes we might feel weak, but when we, when we think about, you know, our God, when we think that, you know, how powerful and how amazing is our God, we have this confidence, you know, confidentiality uh, that we expect to God, that God will, you know, protect us and give us, um, you know this assurance and long lives uh, his years as many generations when it says that his years and many generations you know uh, uh, we, if if we make a, a simple you know comparison between the the Saul's you know Saul kingdom that you know that kingdom you know kingdom was one age, you know, is a, it was a matter of one age it was a, an expiring kingdom, you know, because as we know that that kingdom, you know, ended up once the you know, King Saul was, you know, was gone. But, you know, this, I think this is, you know, above, it's, it's beyond, you know, it's more like, uh, it's thinking about the, the kingdom uh, of, of, you know, of Christ. So, uh, we we know that you know the as many generations and and that and he shall abide for you know before god forever uh, it's it's clear that it's not you know saying anything about human being you know and any human being around but it's saying for you know for you know god for son of god which is the, the christ so uh there you know uh, there is a re reference that uh, it's it's a little bit like you know it's it's long but kind of um, I would like you know, maybe you can read it at home. It's a Second Samuel. Um, it's a beautiful it's beautiful passage. You know Second Samuel chapter seven, verses eleven to sixteen, which you know it it speaks more about this um, kingdom uh, and uh, about the the Son of God. And you know uh, about his you know the promises and and lineage that he you know the Son of God will come, and uh, I have a it's a, it's a it's a phrase from you know, 
um, uh, McLaren. It's it's called, uh, and it says this this psalm is so mess messianic that the everlasting kingdom of Christ alone fulfills its prayer. So, as as we uh, you know as we understand and kind of go deep. And we see that this this psalm, it's more than just a, I don't know, uh, a song uh, of you know someone's overwhelmed heart, but it's it's you know it tells more about the the Christ, the the Messiah. So, and uh, just a few things, and I'm done. Uh, when it's when it says or prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him so uh, you know we we you know easily understand that david himself you know, needed that mercy and truth right so based on that you know circumstances that bible says he was looking for those right he was looking for a rock he's looking for the salvation for a shelter but also it says that you know mercy and truth right so but also you know the he knew also that you know his greater son that promised messiah will you know will also rely on those you know god's mercy and truth so he's you know partially speaking also for, for, for messiah and uh, uh the Charles, you know, Charles Spurgeon says, as men cry, long live the king. So we hail with acclamation our enthrones, Emmanuel, and cry, let's mercy and truth preserve him. Eternal love and immutable faith, faith, uh, faith faithfulness are the bodyguards of Jesus' throne. So, uh, you know, as we we have seen that you know that the mercy and the truth you know uh, was uh, was part of of, of Jesus' life, um, and then just for closing, um, I'll, I'm going to read the verse eight. Um, so I will sing a praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. It's, you know, just uh, concluding. I know there are a lot of things that, you know, we can say about this verse, but um, we understand that our life, it's, it's very, you know, our life with God is very dynamic, right? So we don't just do one thing and, and we are done. So we are, we are here daily. Uh, where have you know we have this relationship daily with God? We we pray, we read the Bible, we you know, and and most and, and most importantly is that we put in practice you know the the, the lessons of God, and uh, when it says that I that I you know that I may daily perform perform my vows, it you know means that we know that God. It's daily, you know, constantly with us, right? God is constantly, uh, daily, you know, moment, time, time after time. You know, it's it's protecting us. It's it's giving us His love, and uh, uh, you know, we we feel you know His His presence, and we know that God it's always you know for us here. So, uh, and one one thing that I would like to so it's it's a it's kind of interactive right so david says i will you know daily perform my vows which means you know that everything you know that we we owe to god so we should you know turn back i mean which it's i'm not saying that you know uh, we owe anything material but the idea is we owe the you know the the praises and and sings and and the, the worship to him and just kind of uh, one one last thing to emphasize as we saw that david you know began this you know this psalm desperately you know in desperate way crying to god with a heart you know 
that was fainting and overwhelmed. So it turned out that David, you know, uh, uh, David turns to, to, you know, praising the Lord, praising and, you know, honoring the, the character of God as expressed in his name and doing, you know, doing those things forever. So just, uh, you know, closing prayer and, and uh, you know, getting some lessons from, from, from this psalm and from the, from the, you know, from the word of God, which was, you know, uh, convey from David, so we uh, we understand that you know how how amazing is our God, Holy Father. We thank you tonight. We thank you that um, uh, you have you know you have given us that you know the rock of salvation. You have given us the, the shelter. You know, you have given us the the tabernacle that we can come and 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 praise your name together. And uh, we can give the worship to your name. Uh, uh, we, I thank you for those uh, wonderful lessons that uh, uh, our ancestors, uh, you know, are showing uh, the the faith to you, God. They're showing this, you know, faithful uh, uh, faith, and we learn a lot. Uh, about those, you know, scriptures that you know you you have written through the real people before, as as we understand that uh, you know our life as a believer, uh, it's uh, it's uh, very interactive with you, God, and uh, King David says that we uh, that I may perform my daily vows. Uh, I hope that everyone, you know, here. I might might have that heart that can be dedicated to perform your your vows, God, and uh, we can give our lives and our hearts, and uh, we can have this um, honorable uh, life toward you, God. Thank you again. Thank you for everyone here tonight, and uh, may may your name be blessed. Amen.